Um, it is now my honor to introduce Tarek Abdullah, tonight's keynote speaker. And you're here with us. Hey, Tarek, good to see you. So um, when we were trying to decide on a theme for this year's gala, it was um, before the pandemic actually, but we already knew we wanted to focus on hope. What gives us hope? What inspires us to keep going? And one of our members proposed focusing on food justice work with youth because uh, youth give us hope. And that's how we came to invite Tarek. And we're so grateful that you accepted. Um, Tarek is a chef, artist, innovator, and community activist based in South Seattle. Through his North African and Mediterranean cuisine, Tarek channels the flavors of his childhood and Muslim upbringing, sharing meals with fellow community members and culinary knowledge with local youth. When the pandemic hit and food insecurity spiked across our region, Tarek helped to fill a much needed gap as a co-founder of the Seattle Kitchen Collective, providing free meals to those in need, no questions asked. Um, and if you look at the end of your digital program, you can see a way to donate to the Seattle Kitchen Collective, which I encourage you to do. Um, his projects and accomplishments are really vast from having filmed the Munchies Guide to Washington series to hosting pop-up dinners at Midnight Mecca, um, to doing the taste with Anthony Bourdain, um, to do being a youth culinary instructor at Coyote Central, uh, Tarek feeds the people. So we're grateful to you for joining us tonight to tell your story. Hello everyone, how are we doing? My name is uh, Chef Tarek, AKA Cook a Tea, AKA Chef Tarek, uh, the man with the pans. Um, yes, I am uh, 47 years old, Seattle resident with uh, 20 plus years in the industry between Seattle and Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, basically I want to just talk a little bit about my work and my goals and how we can all work together and, and try to fix what we have going on right now. And so basically we'll just start off by what is Feed the People? Um, so basically a few years ago, some folks in the neighborhood were pretty much were like, Tarek, you're always feeding the people. And I pretty much was like, okay, I, I know I do that, but you know, we're cooks. That's what we do, right? And so I decided, you know, I'm gonna just roll with that tagline. And I've been rolling with that since then. And through that, I have created multiple platforms, be it through pop-ups, uh, color education for kids, community events, uh, even high-end dinners, et cetera. Uh, but the goal was to use food as a tool to bridge communities and to honestly offer some opportunity through with, with jobs, tech, but through food for our youth in particular. So through that, um, 10 years in LA was a good move for me down there. I went down to LA, started teaching kids cooking there and really just wanted to showcase kids and see what, let them see what I was doing in the kitchen and then they got to learn. And through that, I really fell in love with teaching, did 10 years there, came back, and I pretty much knew exactly what I wanted to do. But the goal was, is like in what format and how would I do that? And so with a little more experience at a couple more restaurants, roughly about 2012 is pretty much where everything, the beginning of Feed the People really started. Um, we started out just doing some pop-ups, like I was saying earlier, um, and the pop-ups basically consisted of something that was honestly not existing in Seattle at that moment in time. Uh, Midnight Mecca was a late night pop-up, because why not have food on a late night after 11 p.m.? Um, and then from that, we shifted to doing the, the infamous Morningstar brunch pop-up which basically it was a community gathering consisting of amazing food, artists. Uh, we even had some farmers selling produce. We had vendors. And that really, we stuck with that for a while. And that was something I think gave me the green light saying that I knew I had something. And the question was like how I wanted it to, to, to go. And so once brunch pretty much stepped to the side, uh, decided to try a new venture and ended up uh, doing Midnight Mecca, which is a high-end five to six course uh, uh, fine dining dinner, uh, dinner experience. And with that, 
I was able to incorporate my students. And so I have two teams, um, a kitchen team and a plating team. And basically what it is, the first three courses, the kids, they do plating and the other three do uh, plating and then we swap. And so in doing that, it allows them to, I give them plenty room to cook, create. Um, they have to be able to engage with adults that they've never actually spoken with before, but they really, really enjoyed that. And I pretty much, and that's when I really, really knew that it wasn't about a brick and mortar. It was more about food and youth. And with that, I've managed to actually do what I've always honestly did since the beginning. And now I just expand on that, which is food education for youth. And so here we're at Coyote Central, which is a nonprofit for the arts for kids between the ages of 11 and 17. I have been an instructor here for the last seven years. Um, and honestly, just really teaching them, teaching kids anything, and everything that has to do with food. Because it's not always about being a chef, right? It, it's, it's always about what avenue in food do you enjoy and how can I tap your brain to give you that opportunity? And since I've seen my share of food experiences over the years, I feel like I use, I use, I'll be able to use that as a leverage to show, showcase these kids that yes, you can do these things. And you know, through that, it, I expanded on to doing more than just being just here. I was like, what else can we do to incorporate community and youth, like any way possible? What can we do? Um, and so one thing I realized is that the young generation here loves to be out. They love hanging out at night. And so why not we do, so we decided to do After Dark. After Dark is just basically a late night, happy hour uh, gathering with food, drink. Um, but it was the perfect thing that was missing at a time and in a city that doesn't really do those things. And so through that, I was able to incorporate a couple of my youth, ages, of course, a little bit older, and they got a chance to see what it's like to produce the food, cook the food, set up, break down, and of course, they, they walk away with a little bit of money. And then from there, it was really just constantly pushing myself and pushing myself how I could constantly create this communal congregation, I guess, as you, if you want to say it's that. Which, I mean, because I, I grew up around the idea of just being around a lot of people and just congregating. This is something that I enjoy. And I think we all enjoy it. And because of COVID, you know, that kind of put things on hold just a little bit. And then I had a moment. Um, and so a few months back, midsummer, um, I decided to sit down with my friend Malcolm Proctor. He's a very talented muralist. And I was like, hey, let's go paint a building. So we found an old building on Beacon Hill called Cusina Filipina, which is a, it was a previously owned Filipino restaurant that fed a ton of people, not only in the Beacon Hill neighborhood, but also uh, the greater Seattle. Um, they closed down about five years ago and the building just sat vacant. And it was like the perfect experiment of what we had in mind. So Malcolm and I, we started on June 20th. It was a Saturday. We put feed the people on the wall within three days. And the next thing you know, it, the neighborhood was coming around. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then paint supplies came and then more supplies came and then more folks wanted to get on. And then after that, we started bringing in more artists and more artists. Till about three weeks ago, we ended up with 80 artists, 20 of them of uh, kids under the age of 10. And with the huge support of Beacon Hill, we've managed to not only turn it into an outdoor art incubator space, but we've actually turned it into an event space. Another thing that you can do to bring people together, which was whole host food music art events, or we allow someone to host an event there or my favorite, which is the Hanford Night Market, which is a food court rodeo. So six to eight different food vendors. And of course, what does that do? 
It brings people out of their house. It brings them together. But yeah, it's COVID, but, but it's still managed. Man, it was manageable for enough for folks to be able to just come, grab something, say hi to someone, and then go back home. And because of that, we are now officially, the Beacon Hill Plaza is no longer called the Beacon Hill Plaza. It is now officially called the Feed the People Plaza. And, and, and it's funny, like anytime we bring that up now, people are always asking, can we host an event there? Can we host an event there? And of course I say yes. Um, I think we should always look at the idea of finding ways to bring folks together and really think outside the box. By, like the reason why we did the food court rodeo was because we don't have that here. Portland, known for having these food rodeo setups. But, you know, and what I like about it is not just the idea of congregating, but it also creates another look at economy, you know, another way of producing dollars, another way of uh, an emerging food culinarian, if you want to call it up and coming, giving them an opportunity. And so for me, for me, I'm always really trying to find ways to create the opportunity, uh, create money, create jobs. And honestly, just the idea of just letting any child know that no matter what, there is an opportunity through food. It's just your choice of how you want to do it. And I will do my best to provide what I can. Um, you know, to, you know, you, people kind of wonder where it really came from. A lot of that stemmed from um, growing up in the south end of Seattle. Uh, south end consisted of various uh, uh, communities. You know, East, the ocean, we had some East African communities. And, you know, when you live in the south end of Seattle, there's always, there was always something going on. There was always some sort of event or there was always a family that invited someone over. And so, and, and so through that, I knew there was something there. I just didn't, wasn't really sure at that time, but those are all examples of like why I do what I do. Uh, let's, for instance, let's just talk about kids. Let's go back to kids. Uh, we talk about how, you know, are kids old enough for certain things? And I say, they got time to be in front of a keyboard. They got time to be on a cutting board. And so why not look at food in a way to where it's engaging, it's hands-on, and guess what? They get to make it. They get to showcase it to their parents. And when you see that, the look on their face of, a, of an accomplished project that they did, that, that just pushed me to want to really, I, I, I just wanted to do more. I really wanted to do more with that. And so now with the community kitchen, which we are doing, which is providing free meals, just like Sarah said, for anyone in need, we now add two students. Uh, they are 16. Um, they work roughly about four hours. Um, and they really see it all. Uh, large batch cooking, uh, learning how to read recipes, to honestly just engaging with folks at a time right now that is, who would have thought we would have be at this point? But I think when we, if we look at how we can keep our kids engaged, this is one way. And I, I feel like these kids will definitely look at this in a moment in time down the road when they realize and say, there was a time where I fed folks food for free. And there will always be a time that somebody may need a meal. And I know that I can do that because Chef Tarek, if Chef Tarek did it, or if Chef Tarek's friends do it, then I can do it. And that's why I push and say, anytime you have a child that's in that and wants to come into that kitchen and says, has that look on their face and wants to cook, don't hesitate. Like seriously, do not hesitate. You know, there's ways, there's, there's ways, if you got any questions, by all means, call the guy, call the cooker, and I can help you out with that. But I really just want folks to understand that we, it's okay for a knife to go in their hands, as long as you have the protocol and the safety, and just make it fun. A lot of times we'll just, you know, why not just come up with a competition? What's your favorite thing to eat? Okay, 
Now you got 10 minutes to do it. What kid doesn't like competition? But it also, because of that, it pushes them too. Because the thing is, it's like you step away, you give them the tools, they create it, they finish it. And, it's a, and for them, that's a big accomplishment. And so I try to do my best I can um, to, to be there for the kids in any way possible. Um, and that also goes for our community collective. So at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, uh, eight of us came together um, and decided that why don't we provide free meals for folks during a time that people don't have access to food or do not want to go outside or leave their homes. And so through that, we formed this collective and what it did, it allowed to folks from various neighborhoods to have access to food for a handful of hours of the day and for completely free. And what I've also learned during this whole process is that the access to free food is there, people. I want to say that it is there. I get anywhere roughly between five and 700 pounds of food a week, completely donated. So yes, our kitchens are 100% food donated kitchens. And so that is another reason why we wanted to show folks that food doesn't always have to have a price tag. Because we have access to so much. Why can't we come up with a format, a structure to where food can be readily available for anyone at any given time? Yes, I like the idea. I think we honestly know. I think we should have the opportunity to give that person two choices to pay and support or to just come and get it for free to go to your favorite restaurant or you have some some tight times. There's always a community kitchen there for you. And so we are going to continue doing this work until we can't do it anymore. I'm going to continue doing this work so I can't do it anymore. Hopefully, a couple of our young ones will definitely step up and take, take the reins and tell Cook a Tea to step aside. We got this. Um, I hope that happens. And I, you know, I really want anyone else out there to say, if you're interested, you want to come work, volunteer in the kitchen with us, you can contact me, cheftarek.com, or if you just really have any advice for us, or anytime you have a question about food or making a dish in your kitchen with your child, feel free to give me a call. I'm there for you. And uh, I really know I could go on for days about this work, but to be plain and simple about it, I just want food to be readily available at any given time for anyone. And uh, in the words of many of, the, in the words of all the kids here at, uh, at the kitchen, that was some really good food, Mr. Mr. Cooker T. Oh, good times, good times. But let's just, uh, real quick, I just really wanted to just also say that if you live in a neighborhood and you're in a neighborhood that you live in for, say, three plus years, officially, you are in a neighborhood of your own that you live in. And if you live in this neighborhood, you should take the time, and if there's something that's not there, create it. The plaza was created with no questions asked. And what it did, it brought people out. You know, it gave people an idea of looking at, hmm, I guess I could do that too. Of course you can do that. It's a matter of do you want to do that? Between to watching a six-year-old paint to a 50, 60-year-old person paint on that, on that wall, was a sign of saying that there is opportunity for anyone and congregating can happen no matter the age, no matter the gender, and no matter the neighborhood. Create, 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 create. There is no excuse for you to not create. You must all make time to create. If we know that we are missing something or there's something that we really want, 
knock on your door, meet your neighbor, say hi to your neighbor. All right, I do this. Hi, you do that. What if we do something together for the neighborhood? This is all, this, this is just basic ABCs and one, two, threes for me. Um, I like to know who lives in my neighborhood. I want to know my neighbors. My neighbors should know who I am. Um, I know a lot of us don't really get a chance to really experience that anymore because a lot of us are really caught up in this. We're now into more of an apartment lifestyle to a degree. But if you do have an opportunity to live in your neighborhood, definitely take the time and support all those businesses, every single one of them. Those times that you think you might want to go to that big, that big wig coffee shop, think about that corner, think about that corner coffee shop. Shout out to the station coffee shop on Beacon Hill. Support these spaces. All these other big companies, they have the money to be able to to maintain and continue to do it, continue doing the work that they want to do business-wise. But let's think about certain small businesses and why they get into business. And they do that because of the fact that like they want opportunity, but they also want to create opportunity. And in order to be able to create opportunity, we need to make sure that we value these spaces and go into these spaces more than once. And make yourself readily available for for them you never know go into the space and say hey i hear you might need something i do x y and z maybe i can provide for you that's another way of just giving back so definitely all i say is definitely look into how your abilities your skill set can provide an opportunity for your neighborhood or for that little one Is there anything else I want to say on that? I don't know. Yes, there's plenty more. When I was, uh, when I turned 26 years old, I signed up for my first cooking class. I walked in, I saw the kitchen. It was a crazy mess. I was scared, I was nervous. I cleaned up the kitchen. We had summer camp, 22 kids signed up. Scared out of my mind. I was like, how am I gonna teach 22 kids? How am I gonna do this? But then over the years, I managed to figure out my strengths and my weaknesses and find out like, how many can I teach? What is the curriculum? Can I create a curriculum? And then over the years, I kept on modifying and modifying and modifying. But I definitely knew that this was the way for me to go. I, I could clearly say, yes, I'm gonna open up a brick and mortar. But you know, in reality, there's nothing wrong with watching a seven-year-old make crab cakes. That puts a smile on my face. Oh man, I'll never forget that little five-year-old that made crab cakes, that was great. But yes, to, to sum things up, to everyone out there, I want to, I would say that look at what you can do for your neighborhood, not just once, not just twice, and not just three times. Anytime you have free time, make time. Make time for your neighborhood, make time for your community, and definitely make time for kids. This is the perfect time for you to take your skill set and put it into the mind of the young one right now. Do not be intimidated by the fact of like, I am a certain age group and they're not gonna understand. Well, that's where improv comes in. That's where improvising comes in. And then once you get comfortable, you realize it's not that bad. The kids wanna learn just as much as what you have. So give what you can, do what you can. And on, in the words of many people, Tarek out. Thank you. Thank you, Tarek. I just changed my screen so you can see the strengthening local economies everywhere banner above me. And I just, I mean, like, I haven't, no one's ever given a keynote in our 14 years of SLE that was more uh, appropriate, I think, to what we're trying to promote in our organization um, and that theme specifically. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Create, create, create. I'm create, so create, create. I'm so inspired. I really am.
Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Right on.